I'm a big fan of arcade machines from back in the day, but also the new versions. And if you didn't know, now you know. The reason why I'm just a big fan of it, because I simply grew up with these devices, with these gigantic cabinets and old school games. I did quite some different reviews here on the channel of our different machines like Arcade 1UP, Chinese import versions, simple bar top from AliExpress, but this thing, Legend Ultimate, I can tell you I was really excited to get this thing in my collection. And it's something completely different, there is no Pandora box inside, there is no Raspberry Pi. Now we're going to talk about something completely different with quite some interesting features that we're going to discuss in depth in this video review. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do now, let's put it together. So what I did understand, this is the new version that I released from Ad Games, and there will be some things different with all the previous models that I have spoken of with Retro Rail, because the first edition I couldn't buy them here in the Netherlands. Okay, so let's remove the control panel, and as you can see, everything is packed up very well. Because with these heavy boxes, it's so important that they pack it up very well, otherwise it will get damaged. So here we're having the side banners that we'll show you later on in this video, just going to put them back. But only the bottom part, that is something you need to put together. It's very easy to do and that I will show you what kind of parts you're going to get. Okay, so here we're having the side panels and all the loose panels that we need to put together. It's similar like the arcade one-up system that I built before. Of course, it's always very important to check all the parts before you're going to assemble it if nothing gets damaged by transport and everything looks very nice. It's like buying something from Ikea, seriously. Just get the manual, check it out and everything is marked by letter. Ok so as you can see over here the top part is completely assembled but there is a minor problem with my version. I think this is a common problem with these things at the beginning. It's more like the first batch as you can see here that the plexi at the front is covering the ports, the HDMI and USB and that's something I'm going to fix and show you how you need to do this. Because this is not a way how you can use the system. A little bit of a bummer. As you can see, there's a little bit of tension over here, but we need to fix it. Otherwise, we're going to have a problem. Okay, so I'm just going to remove the monitor. And what you need to do is remove this piece of wood. That's the first step that you need to do. Next step, let's remove all six screws from the monitor so we can pull it out very gently. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is lift it out of the position. It's, be very careful with this. And don't get anything of filth or dust between the display and the plexi. Otherwise, it will trap between and it will be freaking annoying. So if you're fixing the tape here in the middle, that's the only thing you need to do. Put it in the right position and your problem will be solved. And that's it. Okay, so in the side of the box we're finding the 12 volt 5 amp power supply that will give juice to the main board and the monitor. And of course, we're going to get this collection of screws Everything is put in the perfect position and marked with a letter. So check your manual. That's the only thing that you need to do because when you're checking it, it's very easy to see how you need to put it together. Okay, so the bottom part is assembled and now it's time for the control deck. But one of the reasons why I really like the Legend Ultimate already is simply because we're having so many new ways to play. We're having a trackball, we're having spinners. And putting this thing together on the cabinet is very easy to do. You only need to connect three things. There's the white connector over here, the USB, and of course the one for the power supply. Otherwise the device will not power on. And this is the only thing that you need to do. When everything is ready to go, you need to put the two screws over here at the right and the left top corner. And when these are assembled, the next thing that we need to do is going to put the side buttons in position. And that's pretty cool, so if you want to play some pinball games, there's also a new way to play. When you're looking closely over here, you can see we're having three contacts that is needed for the side buttons. Okay, so what we're going to do is put them over here. Then the only thing you need to do is use two screws to put them in the position. And that's it. But when it comes to the art of the cabinet, there are some things you really need to know. I do like the Retro Ralph, uh, I mean Racket Ralph on the side. But at the front, you're seeing all of the names. It's more like a little bit chaotic. I don't like it. But another thing that is very strange and unique, the way how they assemble the artwork or the way, or better said, what they are doing with this. So the artwork in general, as you can see over here, this is not a sticker like the previous model. No, no, no. This is held by the plastic transparent screws. And what we're going to get is not a sticker like the previous models. No, that is the strange part about it. So this very thick plastic, it looks like very good quality and the art print itself is very good. But I don't get it why they're not putting stickers over here. I find it very strange. 
it's just a cheaper way to let's say sell a product like this when you're assembling the let's say more like side banners you need to keep in consideration that they are plastic screws so be very gentle when you tighten them up otherwise i'm guessing they will break off you need to be very careful if you want to put it together simply because you can see that you need to put some tension on it and then put everything in position but still it will not be so smooth like an original sticker and that's a little bit of a bummer it looks nice but it is not perfect the lighter marquee is something that is very cool with the legit ultimate arcade but the way how it looks is something you need to decide if you like it or not i don't have a problem with it i think it looks pretty cool but let's take a close look inside and why does it look like this and the reason is just the way how they assembled the marquee they have assembled it with six parkers and in combination with some double-sided tape and the light up marquee works with one gigantic led strips at the back over here so with the legend ultimate arcade we have two speakers beneath the light up marquee and in my opinion the perfect position for the best audio experience okay in the back you can see we're having two covers over here that will cover up the speakers and then we've been looking at the main board itself you can see the wires go straight from the main board into the speakers itself but i was wondering what kind of speakers do we get so i opened it up for you guys just to check it out what kind of quality do we have so we're going to get 10 watts of 8 ohm each speaker so it got a decent amount of watts but again it's just hooked up to an amplifier that's inside in the main board and the magnets are pretty decent if you're looking at this so but i'm very curious how are the speakers going to sound inside this arcade machine <laughs> So the audio itself is pretty decent and it sounds good but i personally would add an amplifier and add some better speakers or just get yourself and do that one set with a subwoofer that would be pretty awesome so when you're looking at the display itself it looks beautiful and very vibrant it's a full age display that runs on 60 hertz i looked it up the specification of your curious what are we going to get with this so what we're going to get is the mv238 fhb n30 so we're going to get an ADS panel, this means it's similar or better than an IPS panel with new technologies inside. The monitor is connected straight into the main board, a little bit similar like the arcade one up. Okay, so let's take a close look at the back. Here we're having the Ethernet connector and the input for the power supply. You can see we're having one plug that goes in and two plugs coming out because we need to power on the main board and of course the control panel. So for the connection of the Ethernet, we're having here the CAT6 connector. Okay, so let's take a close look inside the machine and how have they connected everything up and what are maybe the possibilities for modification in the future. Okay, so in the cable over here, the white version, you can see that this goes straight into the main board is for the control panel that we already connected. Here we have the two connectors for the power, one for the control panel, one for the main board itself. Here we're having the Ethernet connector and the Wi-Fi. I think it's pretty cool that we can connect the cabinet both ways. Here we're having the cable comes from the monitor you're going to get the signal and the power and of course i've shown you before the cables for the speakers and at the left side we're having the cables that go into the control panel so let's talk about the control deck because i think it's pretty cool having a spinner and trackball two sets of joysticks we have a lot of way to play now but let's talk about the controls and how is the joystick feeling i can tell you the joystick feels quite nice and i'm very pleased with what i'm seeing and feeling Okay, next up the buttons, you're pressing it very hard, you can hear the spring itself, but these are feeling very nice. I played for some time and I'm very happy with the buttons. But let's talk about the spinner, because the spinner, these also feel very nice. I went playing with this spinner with some different games, I did notice that it feels very responsive. So. A spinner is personally I have never had on an arcade machine before and this is something that I always missing out big time simply because there are so many games you can't just play with your joystick. So when I'm feeling the trackball I feel a lot of resistance and it doesn't roll that smooth but okay when playing some games it has a completely different way to play shooting games. Ok, 
Okay, here we're having the return button and play one two and the add games button. So the return button, this is something that is pretty cool. This button doesn't work with every game, but it's a fun way, or better said, it's more like a cheating way. You can return to a part of the game that you messed up. So it's pretty cool, very funny. All right, so we're having here the play one, play two. Of course, we're going to need these for the console games. For the arcade game, you can also press the start button and sometimes you need to combine it with the add game button. And in the menu, you can choose, let's say, enter coin. With normal games, you can choose the trackball speed, display mode. There are so many things you can change out. And of course, we're having the scan line filter. That's something a lot of people were requesting with the Pandora's boxes. So let's show you over here with the display mode. It's quite interesting. So as you can see, we can put in an every aspect ratio you like. So that is something that I really appreciate with the arcade games or the normal games with the add games. Over here, we're having the on and off switch for turning the system on and off with one basic switch, very easy. We're having two clickish buttons that are basically the volume controls. So when you're pressing them, you can change out the volume very easily. Most of the time I'm putting them around 80 up to 100 because the speakers are not that loud. Here we're having the input for the HDMI device and two USB connections. And with this button, you can switch between the second input and of course the original add games. But how about playing games on the ad games? It's very cool because we're having a lot of games built inside, but also we're having more options, like we're having Arcade Net. So let's talk about talking about this. Arcade Net is a way you can stream games, and as you can see, we're having quite some big variation of games. You need to make an account, a Netflix idea, so you need to pay an amount of money every single month, and then you're having the options to stream games from the service to your system. And that is an awesome way to play, and it's still a growing library of games. And not to forget the option, bring your own games. Maybe in the future we'll look in this option because there's a lot of to talk about when it comes to the bring your own games option. So with the settings menu, we have a lot of stuff going on over here because here we're having a lot of things that we can do, can configure and even test out. So that's very interesting in my opinion. As you can see already, we have Wi-Fi, sign in, OTG mode, version. We can even make an update. And with the update, it is something very interesting. We also going to get sometimes new games. So with the Ultimate Legend, there is so much stuff going on and so much stuff you can do with it. And here we have the option for data manager, light gun calibration, and upgrading your control deck. What I do like about this arcade machine, it comes pre-built with a lot of games. So when you're looking at the menu over here, we're having some features, leaderboards. So we can have a leaderboard in online. That's also a very cool feature. As you can see, we're having different channels like Atari, Data East, Disney, Jellico, Pico, Taito, and of course, we're having the Tetris. And if you want to go to the platform, here we can choose different platforms. So as you can see, we're having different platforms, not only arcade games, but what I do like about it is you can choose if you want to play games with a joystick, a spinner, or a trackball. Well, I think that is very genius that we can find games very easily this way. All right, so let's play some games, show you how they are running on the Legend Ultimate Arcade. And of course, let's have some fun. <laughs>
So in this video, I took a deep dive inside the software and also in the arcade machine itself so you can see what you're going to get. So if you have any questions, you can always leave it in the comments and consider subscribing, hit the little bell because in the future, it's highly possible I will make more Legend Ultimate Arcade videos. And we'll see you in the next video.